Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to start out talking about audio. We're going to talk about audio in the next few lessons. We're going to talk about everything from audio basics all the way up to mixing audio in your timeline. And I wanted to start out with audio basics, more specifically talking about audio behavior when you bring audio into your project. I always get a lot of questions from people saying, Kev, why do you always work with all mono audio tracks in your timeline? And we're going to talk a little bit about that in this lesson. We're going to talk about multi-channel audio. We're also going to talk about audio setup in your timeline as well. So you get the proper behavior out of your audio, no matter how you like to work in your Media Composer timeline. Now, as always, before we get rolling, I want to give a big shout out to Video Guys, our sponsor. Don't forget, if you're looking for Media Composer subscription licenses, head on down to the show notes below for the links. You can head on over to Video Guys website, get that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your subscription license. And as always, I want to remind you that if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one Media Composer training, you can always send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. All of the lessons are recorded for you to save for your future reference. And I always give discounts if you want to get in and do multiple lessons to get you up to speed on whatever project you happen to be working on. And last but certainly not least, I want to remind you that if you find this tutorial useful, Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media to help us get the word out there about Media Composer. To all those editors in Premiere or in Resolve who maybe need to jump into Media Composer and get a project done, or maybe you've just been away from Media Composer for a while and you just want to freshen up on, on some great tips and tricks, hopefully everybody can get something, whether it's a lot or even just that one little tidbit out of every lesson that we put up on the YouTube channel. All right, now, as I said in the introduction, one of the most common questions I get with people watching my tutorials and even people that watch the way that I work inside a Media Composer is, why do I always work with mono tracks that might very well make up stereo or 5.1 instead of actually working with a stereo audio clip or a 5.1 audio clip? And believe it or not, the answer to that question is actually fairly simple. And it's, I've been working with Media Composer so long, I've been working with it before those even clip types were even invented. All right, so it's been a long time. So for me, I've never really switched over and I've never had audio engineers say to me, please work this way or please work that way. I've always worked that way. And to be honest, I've never really had a problem with anything that I've done or exported because I'm very much into micromanaging audio in my timeline. So I don't mind having to worry about if I bring in an audio clip does it need to go with A1 on the left, A2 on the right, A3 on the left, A4 on the right? And you can see how this goes because my timeline is laid out as mono tracks, but it plays out in stereo. Therefore, all of the odd tracks need to be panned to the left. All of the even tracks need to be panned to the right. Now, what's also important to keep in mind inside of Media Composer is that is the default behavior for bringing in audio into your project. Let me give you an example of what I mean. I'm just going to bring in a clip, one that we've already been working with, and I'm simply going to option or alt and drag it into my bin. Now I'm going to double click on it here, and what I want to do is to simply call up the audio waveforms. Now in this case, because I'm going to make a basic assumption about this clip, that it was recorded on location, there was basically one microphone, and we'll just say that the microphone was mono when it was recording, uh, because basically any dialogue or anything like that is really only going to come from one channel. All your dialogue only comes out of one mouth. It's only going to come from one channel. So in this case, what I might want to do is to get in and choose the audio from this channel, channel one. Or maybe down here, I do have another talent that's actually patched into audio channel two. I want to select just this part of audio channel two for me to drop into my timeline. Okay, so this is obviously where having your clips come in as separate tracks is beneficial. However, in this case, I'm not so much worrying about stereo versus mono. Right now, I'm just trying to find the right type or the right part of the clip to work with in my timeline. And we'll talk to a little bit more about that in just a second. So let's put that aside. Now, it's fairly safe to say that when you're going to bring in music tracks or when you're going to bring in sound effects, 
we're going to say, and I'm not going to talk about 5.1 because the concept of what I'm talking about with stereo is going to work exactly the same with 5.1. But chances are when you bring in audio, you may want to actually bring it in as an actual stereo clip. However, again, like I said before, by default, if I bring in a clip, much like I had just done with that clip from our actual edit here. I'm just going to drop this down because this is a broadcast wave file. I'm just going to select the timecode base for it and say, okay, you'll notice that this music clip takes on the same default behavior as the clip that we just brought in that was actually separate mono tracks. Even though this track is what I'm calling in air quotes stereo, you'll see that it is still two separate mono tracks, which is obviously it's not so much problematic, but might not necessarily be the way that you want to work. So here's where we get to this weird crossroads or this weird sort of fork in the road. And you're going to have to decide what way is to work best. And I'll tell you what I think is the best way to work. And then obviously you can take that into consideration and work however you think is best. What I want to do is to draw your attention to the link settings. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete both of these clips for right now. All right, let's get rid of them. What I'm going to do, Control, Shift, and Equals, Command, Shift, and Equals for all of my Mac friends out there. I'm simply going to head to the link section. And if you take a look at your link options, the very first option you have up here is multi-channel audio. I'm going to ignore for right now, ignore multi-channel audio layout from file. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to, you'll see it says none, navigate over here to where it says edit. Now again, keep in mind, we're only talking about stereo tracks for right now. So you'll see that right now, audio track one and audio track two are set to come in as two individual tracks. But if I actually click that button, you'll see that it lights up green and now that has become a link icon instead of the two separate circle icons. But more importantly, if I drop that menu down, you'll now see that the audio tracks for audio one and two are set to be stereo. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to say, OK, I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to close this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to option or alt and drag my music clip back in. Again, it will ask me what the the time code layout is for the broadcast wave file. I'll simply say, OK, and now if you take a look, if I double click on that file, you'll now see that it looks different. All right. You'll now see that instead of having a single audio icon representing mono, it has two audio speaker icons representing that this track is stereo. All right. And if I come back here, let me just make sure that my audio is not going to blast out here. Okay. You'll see one single clip now plays back in stereo in my timeline. However, we do have a bit of a problem. Now, if I come back to that clip, where I was going in and selecting the different channels to come in and say, well, maybe there's one dialogue track on this track. There's one dialogue track on this other track. You'll now see that if I bring that clip in, it behaves exactly the same. And there's no way for me to get in and actually say, oh, okay, well, maybe I only want to get track one or oh, maybe I only want to get track two. And it's not that you can't do it. It's just that right now it doesn't seem that you can get in and do that. So you can see that this is already leading to an interesting issue. And the question is, how do we get around this? Okay, well, let me show you. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to delete both of these. And I'm actually kind of hoping it's going to give me a Media Composer default behavior here. But we'll see in just a second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset these link options. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to come back here. Now, I do want to point out as well that if you like to work with the source browser, you can actually find those settings as well. You'll notice down here, link and import. If I click on the little gear icon with link selected, you'll see I'll get right back to my same link settings that I just accessed by going into my settings. What I'm going to do is just close everything. And I'm going to option or alt and drag both those clips back in. Again, 2398, that's all good. Okay, and let's see what it's done. Okay. You'll see that Media Composer has actually, for this clip, remembered that it's stereo, and for this clip, it's remembered that it's mono, which is fantastic. But let me give you an example here, all right? Let's say, hypothetically, one of these clips had actually come in incorrectly. Let's use this clip as the example. Let's say I didn't want it to be stereo. Let's say I wanted it to be two separate mono tracks. So the question is, after we bring everything in, how do we tell Media Composer quickly 
what we wanted to do as far as interpreting audio channels. Well, it's actually very simple. And this is why, by its default behavior, I don't actually set any links or anything like that as far as stereo, mono, all that type of stuff. I will bring everything in, and then normally I'll have a bin of music where I'll go through, I'll select everything, and then I'll do what I'm about to show you. Same with sound effects. All I'm going to do is simply, with this clip selected, I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to navigate down here to Modify, right here, and I'm going to modify this clip. Now, you'll see that I actually kind of uh, stole my own thunder here because basically I already have set multi-channel audio set to be stereo. I'm just going to deselect that, and I'm going to say OK, and you'll see it immediately breaks it up in my timeline. Okay. Now, again, the same works the other way. If I wanted to, if all of my music had come in as two stereo tracks or even as 5-1, what you can do is right-click, simply come down to Modify, come, by, come over here to Modify Clip. I'm going to basically click on the stereo icon. I'm going to say OK, and now you'll see this clip is a stereo clip ready to work with in your timeline. So modifying a clip is a huge, 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 huge thing that you need to know about. Now there's other options inside of modify that you have to be very careful you don't alter, but that was a simple and quick one that I wanted to show you to introduce you to modify. So you can see now that what you can do is to bring in all of your clips that might have multiple mono channels. Let's say hypothetically it was recorded onto a camera or some sort of digital audio recording device. You know, you might be working on a reality show where you've got, you know, 16 different dialogue tracks. You don't want to bring them in all combined. You want them as separate mono tracks, but the music that you're going to bring in, maybe you want to bring that all in and then set it all to be mono or set it all to be, you know, stereo like I had just done or whatever the needs of the production are. To be honest, what I always tell people is please check with your audio engineer before you make decisions like this. Um, but it's a great and simple way to get in and to make alterations like that. Now, with that said, once you've brought your clips in, you have to make a very important decision about how you want to work with audio in your timeline. And this is one that always throws uh, media composer, I'll, I'll say, uh, I don't want to say, you know, uh, classic, I'll call myself classic, a classic media composer editor like myself. It always throws me for a bit of a loop when I update media composer because in a lot of cases this setting resets. And what I'm going to do, head back to settings, and I'm going to come up here to my audio setting. And what I want to draw your attention to here is this option right here, default pan for mono tracks. Now, if you are going to work in a manner where you're going to be working with actual stereo pairs of audio for music, like what I had just shown you right here, all right? This setting here is a very important one to set. Now, why is that? Let me show you. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna leave it set the way it was before, all right? And I'm actually looking at the preview side here. So what I'm gonna do is just delete this timeline, okay? And you'll notice that when I create a new timeline, we'll just create a new default timeline here, that it's actually the wrong audio configuration, which is fine because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring this clip in first. And I just actually want, believe it or not, the audio for this clip because that's what's important here. Okay. Perfect. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in the video and the mono audio. Okay. Let's just edit that into my timeline. Perfect. Okay. And you'll notice if I come back and I hit play, because it's on the left channel, you'll see it here only playing out the left channel. However, if I press Control, Shift, and U, Command, Shift, and U to add a new stereo audio track, if I bring in my music here, and I'm just going to bring it in way low. All right, let me just turn these off. Okay, perfect. And I'm just going to bring it in way low. Again, ignore the audio mixer. We'll talk about that in an upcoming lesson. You'll now see that what happens is that when I play back, I now have to worry about getting in and I have to pan all of the mono tracks to be centered because I've got my stereo tracks that are already going left and right. I don't ever have to worry about a pan with a stereo channel now because they're automatically going left and right. However, you'll remember if I go back to that setting, the audio setting, you'll see it says default pan for all mono tracks. We know what a mono track is because we get that little icon, mono track, mono track, stereo track. If I switch that default pan for mono tracks to be centered, now you'll see that if I come back, I'm just going to solo that track and I'm just going to show you the audio mixer here and I press play. You'll now see that by default, it actually pans it to the middle. 
I don't have to do that inside of the audio mixer for every mono clip that I'm working with. And the beauty part is, remember, it only impacts mono tracks. It's not going to impact this track at all. It's going to keep that track perfectly stereo. Okay, and you can see it's stereo there. It's only going to impact all of those mono tracks one, that one. currently live in my timeline. All right, so I hope this lesson has sort of given you a little bit to think about when it comes to bringing in not even just so much audio, but all clips into your project. You're really going to need to think about, do I want these clips mono? Do I want these clips stereo? If I want them stereo and I want to work with stereo in my timeline as well as these mono tracks, do I want to get into my audio settings and tweak that default pan so I don't have to get in every time and set a mono track to be centered? These are all important considerations you need to make before getting started with any project that you work on. All right, now I think that's a good place to leave off in this lesson. For our next lesson, and I teased it a little bit in this lesson, I think we're going to get in and talk about the audio mixer, which is obviously an essential tool when you want to get in and have the music, sound effects, dialogue, and voiceover sounding exactly the way that you want to have it for every mix or every project that you're going to be working on. Now, as always, I want to remind you, please don't forget to like subscribe and share these videos across social media and if you have any questions comments or tutorial requests you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com thanks a lot for watching